Ahoy shipmates, how are we doing? Pirate Rich here and today Griffin Beast have sent to me their Roman Warlord for the Age of Invasion, Invasion Saga game or any other game you want to play I suppose really um, the code for reference is AAR01B okay what we're going to do today is we're going to do a little bit of uh, layering and, and see how quickly we can put this guy together to make him look reasonable. As always, I've done a, a Xenophil undercoat with the Vallejo black and grey and put some pomace on the base so that can start drying. Hopefully the sound won't be affected too much today so I've got the air cooler on because it's very warm and yeah so without further ado we'll crack on okay first up we're going to pop the base colour for the flesh on you can use barbarian flesh and it will drop onto white palette just a reminder that all my army paint stuff I grab from these towers. That's just a bit of my medium. So thin the paint down a little bit. And there's a hand behind the shield somewhere. I wonder his cloak. Yes, he's doing that. I'm a magnificent pose. Look at me. I'm Roman and I'm magnificent. So yeah, I'm gonna put quite a good solid base of barbarian flesh on. I'm dry fairly quick today because it yes. Stunningly warm. That's the base colour on. We're going to move quite quickly for this guy. Next is Abomination Gore, which is our nice base colour red. I'm just using the Army Painted Detail Brush at the moment. You could use a slightly bigger brush if you liked, but it seems we haven't got a lot of area to cover. As you can see I've watered that down quite a quite a lot of the medium just to make use of that nice centerfall we've got. You really want that take advantage of that highlighting. So I've been trying to do a regular Friday night live paint along. Um, I call it paint along because obviously I just bung the camera on and we chat about whatever. It gives people chances to ask, what the heck are you doing? Why are you doing it like that? Etc. 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 But I want to try and uh, once we get it, once I get it sussed out, how to best utilise the live thing is then maybe get a some sort of star starter off starter army from Griffin Beast, you know, one of their four pointers or something and then uh, paint it on camera over a few weeks you haven't guessed yet, this, this channel is all about getting your miniatures on the table and get, them, get those lead mountings painted get them out gaming 
and if we can do that and make them look half decent, all the better. trying to get we're not really worried about the undercoat showing through it actually it's kind of what you want you want the different shade coming through the the red as you say a bit of free shading so we're not going for a a solid coat we're just looking for a good starting base. And I feel that. We're going to put some white over the shield because I've got one of their little big men transfers to pop on at the end. Because they stock all those, so that's quite handy. So, yeah, we let that dry off a little bit. Um, what we do is we grab the next paint, we do the brain matte beige. Let's just start and stop the camera again. Okay, so we can use the brain matte beige. It's just like a off white, sort of ivory sort of colour. I'm just going to drop a layer of that onto his tunic. So I hope people are getting stuff from these videos. Um, just pop comments in the uh, underneath. And let us know what you'd like me to do next. So I'm only guessing at the moment. They just sent me some random stuff just to get us going, but. I can always ask because it doesn't hurt to ask. But if you are tuning in and watching, I'd be appreciative if you can give us a subscribe and a like. And I do like the interaction. That's why I like doing the live thing because you get the instant sort of communication. There's only a few of us on there on a Friday at the moment but you know small acorns and stuff. Once I get through this video I'm going to give Beast Towers a ring and see what they've got coming up. I think they've got some new releases coming soon. They usually have. Let's see if I can uh, dig out some info. So yeah, I'm just going to put some the off-white on the shield because those transfers work better, even though that grey is quite light. If you want it, I want it to be a little bit lighter than that. It depends how you like your shield, but they certainly don't work over a dark colour. Okay, so that's... I'm just going to put a second... Good thing about thinning the paint and, and working with the watered down paint is it does dry quicker, especially on a warm day like this. Okay. So we'll be back in just a tick. Okay, next we're going to just double down with the shading that we've got and just drop a nice red tone over the top. Use a slight bigger brush with this. Use one of the regiment ones that the ones I've saved with the tip gone. Oh, somebody somebody's kid letting them know that they're uh, about. So yeah, 
usually make it really quiet in here first and close the windows and what have you, but it's just too hot today. Hopefully, I won't get too much noise. Just wash that off from it. I've just got a bit on his white bit. Let's just take that off. If you tidy up as you go, you don't have to, but I just think it's a good practice to get into. Mmm, red tone doesn't taste that good, in fairness, I've just discovered. Paint's alright. <laughs> I don't condone the eating of paint. Right, so that's that one. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, next we're going to hit some Viking blue. Let's stick with a detail brush. It's a good size. There we go. Lawn mowers have started. Blue layer on. We'll do now that white's dried a little bit. We'll just get some nice watery stuff off the palette. Yeah, once you've watered it, once you've watered the palette down, really good. I just swapped over to the army paint one. I did have a big like artist artist one that's like a A4 size. And I must I must say the the army paint one's good value for money. He's it came with about 50 sheets of paper and two sponges and uh, yeah I kind of like it kind of like it I'm just going to drop some white onto the plume I'm not totally convinced it's going to stay white but it's a good colour for it to be With the water down paint, I'm not loading up the brush too much. You can almost let it run down the detail. Okay, that shield's okay like that. It's a little bit more on the right there. That's our base colours and our wash on already. We're flying through this one. See you in a sec. Next we're going to use the Crusader Skin Speed Paint. Which, if you've watched any of the videos, is my new go-to wash for the flesh. Popping over that nice flesh of bar, uh, nice base of barbarian flesh we've we've done. There we go. That red's dry nicely. Next, we will grab. Oh, let's grab one of these browns today. Leather brown. Bit of a shake. Really important to shake these army painters. But once you've once you've got them working and you've given them a damn good shake, um, they stay shook up for quite some time. So it's just a little little one each time. But when you first get them, 
put some agitators in there and give them some. I've got like an electric uh, shaker. And I just went through the whole batch of them and just put balls in them and shook them up. So I'm just going to use this leather brown just to catch his shoes and his straps and the bag and all that sort of stuff. This is just kind of you utilizing the time we're waiting for the red wash to to dry. I think that's the the thing with painting these miniatures quicker is is not standing still. I mean, you can. I mean, you can use that to your advantage, can't you? If you only got a little bit of hobby time each day. Put a couple of put a layer on, put a wash on, and you can uh, pick it up again the, the following day. So I suppose this technique does work at a slower pace as well. Let's catch the bottom of those. Okay. It's a nice uncomplicated little miniature this one. I like it. Okay, next we're gonna tease the last squeeze. Oh dear. Oh there we go. I knew there was one more squeeze than that. That's uh gunmetal. Usually I swap brushes at this point, but I'll just stick this one. And we're going to do rim of this shield. And the boss. Ready for him to poke his little head through the... Uh, Transfer. I think he's uh, more than ever let's, uh, let's try and get he's painted fast, just get him on the table, there's so so much good stuff, so many good games to play. Before you paint them, before you get some of the newer stuff, just going to water it down a little bit, I say it helps with the uh, Current warmth as well. If you put a bit of that medium in it, it gives it a little bit more working time. Because obviously, I don't put the metallic on the wet palette. You don't want them to. You don't want your metallics watered down. Well, too much. On the palette, they just seem to go into a big watery mess. I suppose it's because the, the way the little metallic flakes are in the in them. I suppose, I don't know. I'll just make his brooch silver as well there, but probably come back in with some gold for that. Okay, so that's all our metal covered. Back in a sec. Okay, next what we're gonna do, we're gonna drop a bit of soft tone on board. Just gonna some of our medium into it a bit, just so I want it to be quite 
a runny coat. So I'm going to go over that off white. And I'm also going to run it onto our leather. But I really want it to run off the high spots and just settle in the grooves. So what I tend to do is put just that little bit too much on, like that. And get a little bit of just pure medium. And kind of wash it away from the high points. Bit of just pure medium. It does it, it will work if you if you're not using the medium as well, if you just use a little dab of water on your brush. Just I'll find it's a little bit easier to control with the medium. And then I dry the brush out and just a slightly damp brush, just move the wash off of those high bits. There we go. I'm gonna do the same with his plume, just to put a bit of wash on there. So we're gonna come back over that in a minute. And then I'm gonna put a slightly stronger medium on his boots. There we go. Oh, on the back of the shield, where I've done that. I use that leather colour for the wood as well. But now with the washing there, just pick up the grain. There we are. Nice. I'll see you in a minute. Okay, next we're going to use some pure red. It's going to be our sort of mid tone of our cape cloak. And I'm going to water it down a little bit for some of our medium. It will water it down on the wet palette as well. But what we're looking to do is we're just popping this onto the the higher bits where the sunlight's going to catch the cloak. So, in the deepest recesses, kind of in this bit here, I'm just going to put a suggestion of it in there. There we go. You could, I mean, if you want to real layer it up and do your real blends you could mix the pure red and that base red we got together and then paint that in first and then work up your highlights uh, but as I said we're uh, just looking for a nice quick get him on the table look and again in between his legs there it's going to be quite shadowed it's just on the very highest bit On these edges, that's underneath the badge there, it's gonna sorry brooch. It's up for me today, badge. We can see from where we did our xenophore. That's where we're putting this paint. You've got to think about where the sun is. When's the sun shining from? So always, unless I'm particularly doing something different, I always imagine the sun is just kind of where my lamp's shining from. Because it seems to make sense to do it that way. So anything that that light will hit will cast a shadow on the other side of the high part. So. And doing that you always work from the same same place. But it doesn't have to be an exact science. Again, whatever looks cool. That's what miniatures paint is about. Rule of cool, I think. If it looks good, do it.
Okay. So that's the first pass. Now we're going to water it down just a little bit more. And take it some of our brush. And then these very highest places, like up on his shoulders, I'm just going to catch the high points. This time we're going to tighten it down and just do it, do them tight, it's kind of smaller. So each time you, with your highlights, you want to get them smaller. And if you thin your paint, obviously your, your paint comes a little bit translucent, which helps or your blends. There we have it. It's starting to come along. See you in a sec. So now on that cloak we're gonna do his very top highlights and we can use this Mars Red which is a very orangey one that sounded like a poorly motor point just a little bit of medium in this one drag it away roll your brush around get a nice tip and we're just going to come along the same areas we just hit but we're going to concentrate and just come in towards the edges and just the high bits I really just wanted to in this video just to play with these these cloaks because they're good fun I think a lot of these miniatures have decent cloaks to paint and once you crack them it makes such a difference to the miniature I think I'd say is if you were going to really, really work hard on the blends and mix all the colours in between, I would probably miss the wash stage out because you don't really need to do that. But where I'm trying to get a nice quick effect, I think it's a worthwhile step. Just got a little bit on the shirt there. Let's wash our brush out. Just wipe that away. Okay, so I'm happy with that cloak now. So now we can go back to his tabard. So what I do is I'm just going to put a little bit of medium on there. Go back to that brain out of beige, which is the base colour, and we're just going to stay into the into the highlight area. Your wash should have made a nice kind of pattern for us to use. So we're going to leave the washed area intact around the edges. I'm just going to highlight the middle bit. And then his bottom of the tunic again, thinking of where the light's going to catch it. So it's on the edges, around the bottom there, anywhere where's a pronounced sort of fold. I'm going to hit that top bit. And just a little bit on the edges of the plume. Good. And then we're just going to get a straight matte white now. First thing we're going to do with that is we're going to grab our Psycho brush, put a bit of medium on it, have a dip, and we're going to paint the eyes. So lock it all out.
Again, medium dip. Lock out. There we go. And let's see if yesterday, if you have trouble, if, you, if sometimes you're a little bit shaky and you've locked your hands and you're still shaking, if you focus on your breathing when you do it, and that sounds a bit weird, but <coughs> instead of holding your breath, if you let all your breath out, breathe all the way out, and then just relax and paint the eyes. I think it's uh, what they did in the Wild West when they were trying to shoot. I don't know, it seemed to work. Give it a go. Don't hold your breath though, because I don't want people passing out and blaming me, because that would be terrible. Yeah, I don't advise doing that at all, passing out. Not good, so I'm gonna go back to the deal, detail brush, just water that white down, and I'm gonna do the highlights on this tablet. So now we're gonna go just on the very highest part of these, because I'm quite watery. Just gently touch, I don't want too much white on there. Got a bit on his cloak there, so I'll wash the brush out. Zap it off the cloak, off the brush. There we go. And back into the white. I'm just going to hit the edge of these high points on the folds at the bottom. There we go. And then dry the brush out. And I'm going to get my old regiment brush. Get a little bit of paint on board. Oh, it's very wet still. Let's dry it out. So we're just gonna get a little bit of white. You can use a cloth or a sponge. What we want is we're just gonna dry brush that plume very lightly. I've done it just a hint of white on there. There we go. Good. I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so what we do now is get some black out. Back over to the psycho. Dip on the medium on the edge of the pot. Paint my eyes in. I think we're going to use. There we go. This is done. Wash the brush through. Yeah, always keep these, these psychos last a long time if you just use them for like that very fine detail. They're really quite cool little brushes. So next, we're going to use some purple. So see you in a sec. So next, we're going to use some alien purple. can use the psycho brush for this if you want, I'm going to use the detail brush. I'm just going to water that purple down a little bit, make sure I've got a nice amount loaded in my brush. And we're just going to go, not right at the bottom, about a brush, a brush width I suppose off the bottom. Go around the bottom if you like. Just take your time. I'll see you in a minute. 
interruption there. So yeah, just I've been going over nice and thin, just building that up. It's quite a muted purple that this one. There we go. Usually I put that around the sleeves as well, but obviously you can't see your sleeves. So next, we're going to have a look at these trues. You could drop a blue wash on the trues, um, but I don't think it's worth it. Actually, what we do first, before we do those so it's drying, is we get our dark tone and just pop that on the metal. You can either wash it all over and water it down a little bit, as I say, it's quite a strong one. Or what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to use it neat. And move it around a little bit. So I just want that metal to look a little bit dark. There's like hinges on there. Again, if I was doing like a going over the top, I'd get the sort of bronzy colours out and do the hinges different colour. And there's a peak and stuff like that. But as I said, it's not what we're trying to achieve here. We're just trying to achieve a, a pretty cool looking warlord. without working too hard for it. Just done a little bit of metal on there. And his brooch. That's all done. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna just dip back into our original Barbarian flesh. I'm just gonna highlight the flesh up. So it's like a little bit on his nose. Again, we're looking to leave around the edges unpainted so we get that contrast. I've overshot a bit on there, so I'm just going to wet the brush out, clean it up. I'll just highlight the bit on his knuckles there, and just a bit behind his shield where the lights are there, so yeah, that's happy. So let's think, and what else? So he's got a bit of a chin adornment going on there. So let's find a nice dark brown, oak brown. That's a good one. So a bit of oak brown. And I'm just going to water that down just a tad. If you use it nice and thin, you'll see that the uh, Undercoat really does its business here. Let's see if I can get it right out to the camera. You see on the, I hope you can see on that go to that you can just see the Some that leather just needs a little drop, a little touch up with the. Well, I've done some white on there. Look. There we go. So we just love a look at these trousers now. So we're going to highlight the Viking blue with troglodyte blue. If there's too much of a gap with that, if it's too much of a step, you can either water it down like I'm going to do, or you can mix the two together and make a mid-tone. But I'm going to...
use quite a watered down highlight just to because that's what I want to do it if I want to do it the other way I'll do it that way both ways work and I'm just going to hit all the high areas with this with that washed out blue there we go I call, I'm calling that pretty much done in fairness. That's what we do. Put the lid back on our wet palette because this weather, the water really does get zapped straight out of them. And I've already cut the shield transfer. Just peel the backing off. favorite sticker depressing tool I don't know if that's the technical term for it it's certainly the one I use there we go I think the yeah the base is still a little bit wet so yeah, let's give that a moment to dry and we can peel it off. So what we're going to do now is have a little tiny break there to let the, hopefully it's long enough. And then we're just going to dip our brush in some water and get the back of that nice and moist. You can see it change colour as, as it soaks the water up. almost goes as you can see the transfer through it this bit where you've got to be patient and not try and dip fast for the camera oh it's it I think it's ready hopefully fingers crossed I've left because I've not left that very long you need your slightly longer than that there we go I've usually got a so I've usually got a cotton bud on hand for this next bit. I'm just looking to press it down neatly and get rid of all those air bubbles. If you get a really bad air bubble that you can't sort out, I tried to press it like this with a piece of tissue. I say I use, usually use a little cotton bud. If it doesn't want to go anywhere, just moisten the cotton bud. And then just work those air bubbles out. Just be as careful as you can with it, really. Then you want to let that dry. And you can touch the edges in if you want this, the edge of a shield to be the same as that one. Paint it in. And you can leave a metal rim on it. I can't remember if these are, I usually paint it a different colour. I don't usually do metal rims, but it does look kind of cool. So I'm going with the ruler cool. It's probably completely wrong. Please don't hammer in the comments if it is. Um, I know they didn't really have metal edges to their shields, but it's probably the wrong transfer as well. But hey ho, it's cool. Right, so I'm going to leave him there. I think the base is just a little bit too soft at the moment to paint it, but I'll paint the it with some brown. I usually use the oak, oak brown water down and then dry brush it over with a light brown, then put some tufts on it. But what I'll do as always is, I, oh, after I lacquer it, I'll put it in the light box for you and put that at the end of the video, some stills, and also I'll take the stills of the paints I've used. Okay, well that's 
a very uh, quick way to paint a warlord I think and I think he's gonna look alright have a good look when we put him in the light box um, thank you for for tuning in don't forget to subscribe like all that groovy stuff and ring the notification bell apparently don't know really what that means but have a go anyway and hopefully see you on a Friday uh, I try and go live about 7.30 if you do subscribe I believe you then get a, a notification that I'm going live so yeah everyone stay cool stay safe and I'll see you next time cheers <laughs>